Hi, I'm John, and this is Product Spotlight. Today we have a really cool model from Athern, and this one has a sort of a personal connection for me. So let's get to the workbench, and I'll tell you all about it. All right, here's what we're looking at today. This is an SW1500 switcher locomotive. These were made by EMD. This model comes from Athern in their Ready to Roll series. These models come as DCC ready, like this one, or with DCC and sound already included. The DCC ready version goes for $219.99, and the DCC and sound one comes with a Soundtrack Tsunami 2 decoder, goes for $319.99. Now remember, these are MSRP prices, so if you shop around, you'll definitely find it for less from your favorite retailer. The model was packed the way you'd expect it to be in this plastic case and came with a sheet of paper that has the exploded view diagram as well as some information on the back about the warranty. Well, one thing I noticed is that on the website, it says that the DCC ready version comes with a 21 pin DCC decoder plug and in the printed instructions, it still says 8-pin. You'll want to check yours before you buy a decoder if you're getting this DCC ready. Someone I know bought one of these DCC ready and said that it did in fact have a 21-pin plug. Also included in the package is this extra set of uncoupling levers. Western Pacific, I think, only had three or four of these locomotives. So your best bet would be to go to the Athern website or to your favorite retailer and see if they have the one you're looking for. Looking at the paint and markings on this model, it looks really good. And something I'm noticing right away, and I think it's because of the paint job, is these really fine separately applied grabs that go up the side of the locomotive and also on the top. Those look really good. The model has what they call flexi-coil trucks, which is correct for the prototype and an 1100 gallon fuel tank. Jacking pads are included on the side. I'm just noticing these things as I'm looking at it. And something else I'm noticing is it has the little F over here. That means front, which means that this locomotive was operated in that direction toward the right. Looking at the detail on the front of this model, you can see separately applied metal grills on the top here and also on the front. Those look really good. The model does have LED lights, which we'll look at later. And look at the detail on the pilot. There's all kinds of hoses and cables and all kinds of good stuff going on there. And here's a brief look at the front detail from the other angle. You'll notice the little recessed area here for the sand filler. Pretty cool touch there. And there's also a little out of focus right now, but there's also a recessed brake ratchet here, which also looks good. And here's a look at the other side. You'll notice that that grab ladder, I'm going to call it, is missing from this side. Again, another prototype specific detail, just one grab over here. And you can see tucked inside there, there's a horn. Looks really good. Also, from this angle, you can see the firecracker antenna, and the model comes with the sun shades installed, which is also very nice. I find the rear of this model very interesting because not only does it have all the little pinstripes on the stairwells and all that, but it has a fully detailed interior, which it kind of has to because all of the windows back here make it such that you can see in there. And if it didn't have a fully detailed interior, it would look kind of funky. This is the last three quarter angle view that we're gonna look at. Just wanted to show you from this side as well so that you can see the hose detail on this side is a little bit different from what's on the other side. It includes the airline right here. Now we'll look at the top detail. I pointed out the horn casting. It's tucked under the hood here in the front of the cab. Here's those separately applied grabs that I pointed out. I'd like the paint job because it really accentuates how thin these little wire grabs are. And then the bell 
casting also looks especially good on this model. Looking at the front grill here where the radiator is, that's also separately applied photo etched parts that look really good. All right, so this is the part in the process where we get to run the model. And because this model is DCC ready, you'll get to hear what it sounds like without the sound, which is something people sometimes ask me when I have DCC models. So let's get it going. So you can see, even with just DC, it has pretty good slow speed control. Once you get it to a speed where it's not herky-jerky. All right, so to look at the lights, I have to hold it in place because it's DC. So the only way the lights come on is by running it. And you can see their LEDs. And here we go in the other direction. So as you can see, this is a really good release from Athern. The paint on it looks great. There's something about DC where until you get to a certain level, I'm doing this with my hands to simulate the turning of the controller. Until you get to a certain level, it's kind of herky-jerky, as I mentioned. But once you get to that level, it's a really, really smooth runner. And I also want to say it's kind of cool to have a DC-only locomotive running back and forth on the workbench because you get to hear the mechanism. Usually I'm running these things with sound and you don't get to hear that. And I've actually had people ask me, you know, what does it sound like without the, the sound function on? And I usually don't show that because I think most people watching want to hear the thing. And I'm thinking about maybe from now on, I'll run it with the sound and also without the sound. We'll see how that goes. Haven't decided yet. But I mentioned in the beginning of this program that this model had kind of a personal connection for me. And now I'm going to tell you about that because I think it's kind of cool. At the Western Pacific Railroad Museum in Portola, California, they have the sister to this locomotive, the 1503. I got these pictures of the 1501, the 1502, and the 1503 that my friend Gary took back in the day. And you can see that the model is a pretty spot-on representation of what these things looked like when they were working. And the fact that you can go to Portola and operate one of these is just really cool. They only had, I think, three or four of these things. And just the fact that they still have one that's in such great condition and it's part of their be the engineer for an hour or whatever they call it. You know, every so often you'll come across a museum like this where they do this. They let people sign up and then run the engine. That's one of those places where you can do it. So I just want to say, you know, thank you, Athern, for making a model that's this relevant if you've operated the 1503 at Portola, that was one of the numbers that they released with this release of the SW 1500. And so, you know, great job, Athern, putting something out that's so relevant to the people who have operated these things. I'm sure the 1503 must have sold out promptly after the release because of that. So anyway, great job, Athern. I wanted to share that story because it's just a really fun story. Getting to operate a locomotive is something that I think a lot of us dream about. I've been lucky enough to do it a few times, and this one was one of the more special ones because we were up there with friends and it was a great time. And also got to meet one of our train crew members, Ethan, who was the guy that was the 
locomotive sort of supervisor. So not only did we get to go up there and operate the locomotive, but operated it with a TSG train crew member. And how cool is that? So anyway, that's it for this one. I'll see you next time.